Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, we will be creating some winter themed home decor DIYs made with supplies from the Dollar Tree. Now these projects all include real wood and have a neutral decor theme with black and white and wood tones. As always, all of the projects I create have a complete supply list in the description box so you can easily use it for reference as you gather up your supplies. Now before we start, I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you're a new visitor to my channel today, I do hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy these crafts and all the different ways that I'll show you how to style these in your space. So now let's just jump right into those projects. Now this project is a three piece framed snowflake decor set. We're going to need some of these medium sized snowflakes from the Dollar Tree some tumbling tower box from the Dollar Tree, and some black foam board from the Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna start off with our snowflakes and we wanna take three out of the package. Now with these three snowflakes, I am gonna be removing those hanging strings. We won't be needing them for the project, but I will grab my wire clippers as well because what we want to do is cut apart um, two of the three snowflakes to make them look different. I'm trying to design three different snowflake styles and you can cut these however you wish. You could just cut different parts and pieces of them. You just want three different looks. And here are the three different looks that I came up with for my snowflakes. So now what you want to do is take these out and give them a couple of coats of this Satin Bright White by Krylon, or you can use chalk paint or acrylic paint if you like. Now while those dry, we are going to work on some frames and I'm going to be using tumbling tower blocks for this project. So for the first set of blocks, we are going to be joining together our sets of three. So I just want to join three blocks together and I'm using my Sherbonder wood stick hot glue or you can use some fixie woodworking glue for this or you can use regular wood glue. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make 12 of these three block sets and here they all are ready to go and separate them into groups of four. Now we're gonna to put together our frames. So we're going to put together the frames as shown here, making sure we're forming that L shape in the corner. You wanna just rotate it around and then you wanna add another three block set into that corner as well. Now you just wanna make sure that you join them as shown here so you make sure that you have a perfect square when you are done joining your ends together. Now once you have those three sides, just add that last piece which should fit perfectly into that open area, apply your glue, and then press that firmly into place. Now here is one of the frames and you just want to repeat it two more times to have three square frames. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our three frames and I'm going to be staining these with Waverly Antique Wax. Now you can certainly use traditional stain if you like to, but I'm going to be using Waverly Antique Wax for these frames. Just apply the wax on the front, the sides, and the inside of each frame. There's no need to stain the back of them. And here are all three frames stained, so just go over them with a paper towel to remove all the excess wax and allow them to completely dry. Now once they're dry, we're gonna grab our foam board and what we're going to do is we're gonna cut out three pieces of foam board the same size as each one of my frames. So I'm taking a frame, I'm laying it on top and I'm tracing the outside of the frame onto the foam board three times. Now once they're all traced, I'm gonna take my ruler and you could take a utility knife or an X-Acto knife and you wanna cut out all of those squares on the lines that you traced. Now once you have all three of your squares all cut out, I like to go ahead and cut off an additional quarter inch on two of the sides of the square and this will prevent it from showing from the front of the frame. Now you want to repeat this for all of your foam board squares so they'll fit perfectly as shown here. So now that we have everything all nice and cut out, we are gonna lay the frames with the good side facing down and we are gonna start to apply the backing. So I'm just gonna go, on, go around the back of the frame with a bead of the hot glue and press that foam board right in the center. And you wanna repeat this for all three and here are your frames ready to go. 
So flip them back over and now we're going to add a hang string on the back and this is just a piece of jute twine with knots tied on each end. Now you can certainly sit these or hang these however you want to, but I wanted to plot to apply the string to each one of them in case I decided to hang them. And to cover up those knots, I'm just gonna add a piece of this craft paper right over there and this just gives it a really nice clean look covering up all of the glue and the knots of the string. Now you just want to repeat this for all three of your frames. And here are the backs of your frames. So go ahead and flip those over and grab those snowflakes, which should be nice and dry now. We're just going to apply each one into each one of the frames, making sure that it's nice and centered. Now to avoid any glue mess, I'm only applying glue to the very center of the snowflake and gently pressing the center in place and this should hold that snowflake right in place and it should not budge and here is what they will all look like. And now you can place these on display and enjoy these super cute pieces. Now I love how simple it was to create these and how the warm look will blend into most home decor. Now you can choose to hang these, lean these, or put them on picture easels to display them too. It's all up to you and how they will work in your personal space. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Now this project is a pair of skis and a wall decor piece. Now we're gonna start with two five gallon paint stir sticks sold in three packs from Lowe's for 98 cents and one jumbo skewer from the Dollar Tree. Now, if you can't find them at the Dollar Tree, you can also get these from Walmart in their camping section, and they're only 88 cents a pack there. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with those paint stir sticks. Now I wanted to cut them down to about 15 inches. So I'm making a mark, making sure that the parts that you cut off is the handle part. So to hold these together, I like to tape them together with some painter's tape, just so they don't shift while I'm cutting them. Now to cut them, I am gonna be using my manual miter saw, miter box saw here. You can use an electric saw if you have one, but I wanted to show you that these are easily cut with a miter box as well. So we did cut off that handle at that 15 inch mark. And now on the other side, we wanted to kind of cut a point. So the miter box does come with a miter cut, which is a 45 degree cut as shown here. So I'm just gonna overlap that edge and you can see it cut off one side of that miter. I'm gonna flip the stack over, place the saw back in place and saw off the other side. And now you have a point at the end. So now you can take your pieces apart and I didn't want my point to be so sharp. I'm gonna dull it out. So I'm taking a pair of my wire clippers and I'm snipping off that point, kind of rounding it out so I can achieve the look that I'm going for. And then I'm gonna go in with a piece of sandpaper just to smooth everything nice and smooth and make it a little bit more round what I'm going for. So now that that's done, we can stain it. I'm gonna be using my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to apply one nice coat on the top and the sides of both of my pieces. And once both pieces are done, make sure you go over it with a paper towel to remove all of that excess wax. Now go ahead and grab one of those skewers out of the package. Now you can also use eighth inch dowels if you can't find skewers as well. And I'm cutting them down to about 13 inches and I need two pieces. Now for the ends on the cut ends of these, I'm just gonna sand them down until they get to a little point. You can also use a pencil sharpener to do this. Now for the excess piece of that piece that you cut, we are gonna cut two additional pieces about three quarters of an inch, and these will act as a piece on our ski poles. So on the flat side of your skewer, I'm just gonna apply a dot of that hot glue and place that little three quarter inch piece on the end, and then also do that for the other one as well, so you'll have a set of completed ski poles. Now I wanted my ski poles to be black, so I'm gonna be using my black 
acrylic paint to paint these. And I'm just going to apply about two coats of this over the entire ski pole and making sure that you cover all of the creases, especially where the glue meets the piece. Now once these dry, we are going to grab our skis and I wanted to add decorative accents to this. So I'm going to be using my paint pen that I got from Amazon. I'll be sure to link it in the description box below, but you can certainly use acrylic paint to do this as well. So I'm first going to draw a line across the top. Now notice I do have my skis side by side because I wanted the lines to be the same on both of my skis. So I'm doing them at the same time and I'm doing one line across the bottom and two lines across the top. Now in between the top two lines, I'm going to go across again with my black acrylic paint and I'm putting a line right in between there as a decorative accent. And then at the bottom, I'm going to put one black line on top of the white line that I made with my paint pen at the bottom. So now you have your two decorative skis and allow those to dry. Now once they're dry, we can form our ski design. So I wanted them to crisscross. So go ahead and crisscross them, mark them with a pencil, and then I'm gonna add a, a nice bit of hot glue where they crisscross and place it right back on top, pressing it firmly, making sure they're bonded. Once they're bonded, flip it over and I'm gonna add a little bit of extra security by using some of these 3 8 inch staples and I'm gonna staple a few times in the back and there we have it, our skis are nice and secure. So now we're gonna work on attaching our ski poles and we're gonna crisscross them right on top of our skis. So we're only going to apply that first one directly to the ski and we're just going to put hot glue right in the center and lay it on top. Now for the second one, we're going to do a little different. I didn't want the wobbly fixture of it laying on top of the other one. So we are going to cut this in half and then remove another quarter inch of the ski and then of the, of the ski pole and then lay it down on top. So it's two separate pieces. No worries. This will be covered up in the end. So you don't want to see it, but it will make the pieces more secure. So once all your ski poles are nice and secure, we're going to add our, our greenery accent. So I have a piece of um, cedar here. I have some snow dusted pine pieces with pine cones and a berry bundle that I got from Dollar Tree. And all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to tie this bundle together with some jute twine and then wrap it around the bottom just a few times and then tie it off in the back. Now once that's all done, we are going to go ahead and clip off any excess stem and add just a dab of hot glue at the bottom to make sure that stays nice and secure. Now before we attach that bundle to it, I wanted to add my hanging string. Now you can use jute twine, but I chose to use this fishing line because I didn't want my string to be visible while it's hanging. So I'm just going to add a line of that hot glue at the top of each one of the skis and lay two or three inches of that fishing line in the hot glue trim it off and now you have kind of an invisible hanger here that you can use to hang it. Now to add a little bit more security I am going in with some shorter staples and applying two on each side just to make sure that that fishing line does stay in place. Now we can apply our greenery bundle. I didn't want to hot glue it because I wanted this to be interchangeable. So what I'm doing is kind of weaving a piece of jute twine in the back of the bundle. And once I get that woven through the back, I'm going to flip it over and then I'm just going to tie this into place. Now this is perfect so you can change it out during the season with whatever decor you would like. And it's nice and secure on the front. Now, as a final accent, I'm adding one of these black and white ribbons to the bottom. I think that this finishes off the look perfectly and I'm hot gluing it to the bottom of the bundle. And now your piece is ready to go on display. And you guys, here it is. It's all set up and I love how this turned out. Now the beautiful combination of the winter greenery along with the stained wood looks so amazing and would probably fit into any winter themed decor display. And the greenery can be interchangeable too so you could switch it out throughout the winter and holiday season. Now I hope you all give this awesome project a try. Now this project is a wood tree decor display. 
We're going to need some cork craft sticks from Lowe's and these are 98 cents. We're going to need two sizes of the popsicle sticks from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to need one of these box wall art pieces from the Dollar Tree. We're going to grab all of our sticks and we're going to have three different sizes to work with. So we're going to start with the larger cork craft sticks from Lowe's and I'm going to lay one down the center and then several on top. Now I'm going to lay these out and space them about an eighth of an inch apart. Once you get your spacing right, I'm gonna use my hot glue and I'm gonna start hot gluing the sticks all the way down that center stick. Now here are all the pieces all nice and secured in place and we just wanna repeat this process for your smaller sticks and also your medium sticks the same way. And so now we have three sets all glued together and ready to go. Now for the smaller one, I'm just gonna cut a triangle out. So I'm using my ruler just to get a nice triangular shape and I'm gonna trace it on with a pencil. Now once you have that on there, all you have to do is take a nice sharp pair of scissors and this should easily be able to cut right off. Now here is my smaller tree all cut out and ready to go. And now we can work on our medium tree. Now I'm also gonna trace a triangular shape with this one as well with my ruler and use my scissors to cut this one out as well. And here is my medium tree ready to go. So now for the larger tree, I am actually gonna make a triangular shape, but I'm going really wide on this and the top points do not connect. Now we're gonna be styling this a little differently, so we're gonna to have to cut a wide base for this. So again, we are just gonna cut down the sides, making sure we have that triangular shape, and you'll notice how the top is really wide. So now what I'm gonna do on each corner of each stick, I'm going in at a 45 degree angle, and I'm kinda of just eyeballing this, and I'm gonna do this at the end of each one of the sticks as shown here. Now once you get your guide, you're going to go ahead and cut the pieces off starting at the corner of the stick up to the top and you'll notice how it'll start this staggered effect. And here's our tree all nice and cut out and now you have all three ready to go. Now what we're going to do now is we are going to paint and stain our trees. Now I will be using some white acrylic paint for this. I'll also be using some black acrylic paint. And some um, Waverly Antique Wax or you can use some brown paint. Now I'm going to start with my larger tree and I am going to be painting my larger tree in black acrylic paint. And you want to apply one nice coat of the paint all over the front and inside the creases of the tree. And you also want to paint the back as well. Now once it dries, you can get the little tab at the bottom where you're holding on to and complete that as well. Now for the middle tree, I am going to paint that white on the front and back as well. And then for the middle sized tree, I am going to paint that one with antique wax with a firm brush and then wipe that off with a paper towel on the front and back as well. Now I did decide while I was working with this, I wanted it kind of a stand on the back so I can mount them. So I'm using some leftover tumbling tower blocks and I'm gonna glue two blocks together for the black tree. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to adhere it to the back of the black tree at the bottom. So the first thing we have to do is cut the bottom at a straight edge and then I'm gonna apply that double stacked block at the bottom, making sure the bottom of the block is even with the bottom of the tree stump. Now I'm gonna do this for the middle tree and the other tree as well, and we'll be applying one block to those. Now you definitely could have done this beforehand, but this was a last minute decision and it worked out perfectly. So what you have to do now is to finally paint them to match your trees. And here is what the final project would look like and make sure you do any touch-ups you need to do before it completely dries. Now 
Now, once that's done, we can start working on our framed box. So we're gonna remove it from the packaging. And what we wanna do is it has this little raised frame edge on it. So I'm gonna go in with my little um, utility knife and start peeling it off. Now, normally this will pop right up, but Dollar Tree really went heavy with the glue on this one. So I'm using my utility knife to kinda peel it off. It doesn't have to be perfect on the top here. We'll be covering that anyway. I'm gonna use some of those leftover cord craft sticks and I'm gonna be covering the top of this box to give it a wood look. So I'm taking one of the craft sticks, lining it up with the top and I'm marking each edge as shown here and then I'm gonna cut it off where I marked. Now we're gonna remeasure, make sure everything fits and now that it fits, we're gonna use this stick as a template to create more sticks cut off at this length. Now here are all of my sticks ready to go and now we can start applying them to the top of the box. Now to do this, I'm just gonna add a generous amount of that hot glue to the stick and press it firmly into place, making sure that it's aligned with all of those edges. Now you wanna align them very closely together all the way down the box. Now you notice at the very end, there's just a slither of a piece picking out, uh, peeking out there. So I'm just gonna mark it off. I'm gonna draw a line with my ruler for the width of that piece that I need. And then I'm gonna take that craft stick and I'm just gonna cut that piece off with my X-Acto or utility knife. Now once you have your piece ready to go, all you have to do is take your glue, you're gonna run a bead of glue down the side of the box, and then all you have to do is press that piece into place and it fits in there seamlessly. Okay, now that that's done, we are gonna go in with our Waverly Antique Wax and we are gonna stain these sticks. Now all you have to do is you just um, apply it right on top, making sure that you get the top and the sides. Now if you get any antique wax on the checkered print, you can wipe that off with a wet wipe and then let everything completely dry. So now that our pieces are now all dry, we can start assembling our project. So I'm gonna start with my largest tree and I'm going to apply a generous amount of hot glue on that stump and then secure it into place on the far back end of the top of the wood platform. And then I wanna apply each one of the trees on either side of the tallest tree as shown here, leaving a little gap between them so you can work in some greenery. Now the greenery is definitely optional, but I just think it adds a little bit more character to the piece. So I'm taking some um, miscellaneous pieces that I had on hand, which are cedar sprigs, and I'm just sticking them in and around the tree, and I'm loving how this looks. Now, if you did want to get a little bit more fancy with it, you can use some fairy lights, and these are Dollar Tree fairy lights, and I'm just interwinding them in between the trees and the greenery, and I do suggest that if you do add lights, add them before your greenery, but putting them in there does add just a little bit of, of sparkle, and then you can tuck that battery pack right underneath. And here is what they look like in the test. And here you have it, you guys, a sweet winter display of trees for your decor. Now I love all of the different sizes and dimensions of these and you can paint or stain them in any way that you like. And I think that adding the greenery gives it a little more dimension and visual interest. Now you can choose to display this as is, or you can add even more to it to be festive, like adding some lights. Now I love how the lights look on these pieces. Now for these, I did use a strand of Dollar Tree battery fairy lights for a little sparkle, and I think they look awesome. Now I think that this display is the perfect size for battery lights and you can simply tape that battery pack under the open bottom of the art piece. You all have to let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Now this project is a Let It Snow wood sign. Now we're gonna need one of these Let It Snow wood signs from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna need a wood kids puzzle from the Dollar Tree. Now what we're gonna do is start off with the Wood Kids Puzzle. We're gonna remove it from all of its packaging first. 
Now I like to remove all of the pieces and hot glue them into place because I wanted this to be a very smooth back, but you can certainly repurpose these pieces if you have a need for them. Now I didn't need them, so I just hot glued them back on the back and that'll make the back of the project nice and smooth. Now I'm also gonna sand off the little stamp on the back of the wood piece so it won't show in my project. Now once that's sanded off, we can proceed with staining and I'm gonna be using my Waverly Antique Wax. Now as always, you can certainly use traditional stain if you like to. Now I am gonna cover the entire back of it and also don't forget to get around those edges as well. Now once it's all covered, go over it with a paper towel to remove all of the excess wax. So now what you wanna do is sit this to the side to dry and we're gonna grab our sign. Now this let it snow sign is a little larger than our wood puzzle. So what we're gonna do is we are going to mark off the top of the letters where we need to trim it down so it'll fit right on top of our sign. Now once it's all marked, it's easy to cut it off right where you marked it with a pair of standard scissors. And now we'll do one last test fit and everything fits perfectly. Now we're gonna be painting our sign and I'm gonna be using some black acrylic paint. I'm also gonna be using some white acrylic paint. Now we're gonna be painting our black first, so we wanna go ahead and tape off the edge of the letters so we don't get any black paint on our snowflake. Now I'm just gonna be applying one nice coat of this black acrylic paint on the top of the letters and in the sides of the letters where it's exposed. Now here are all of my letters painted in that black acrylic paint and it looks great. Now once it starts to dry, we're gonna remove that tape and then we can go in with our white acrylic paint and we're gonna give a nice coat to our snowflake. We're gonna let that dry and give a second coat as well. And here's our snowflake all nice and painted and everything is good to go. So now that everything is dry, we're gonna grab our sign and I wanted my letters to pop, so I'm gonna use my acrylic paint pen to outline my letters. Now I did get these paint pens from Amazon. I will link them in the description box below, but you can certainly use some acrylic paint and a fine paintbrush to get the same effect. And here is what it looks like. And now what we're gonna do is apply it to the top of our wood sign. Now to do this, I'm only gonna apply some hot glue to the back of it in a few areas, and then carefully place it right on the top of the wood sign in the center. Now once it's nice and secure, we are going to be adding a hanger to this. And I, what I decided to do was to use some wood beads. Now I have some white beads and black beads and I actually am repurposing these beads from a garland that I got from Walmart last year. So they're selling it this year. I suggest you grab some of those and you can repurpose them as well. So what I'm gonna do is take some jute twine. I'm gonna add a little hot glue to the end to make it so it doesn't fray. And I'm gonna start adding my beads to it. Now the order that I'm adding them are two white beads, one black bead and repeating that that process since I have more white beads than black beads on hand and I'm going to repeat this until I get my desired length. Now I'm going to tie a knot on each end just so those beads remain in place making sure that you have at least a three inches of a tail on each end. So go ahead and flip your sign over. You wanna align your beads at the top about an inch in from the edge. You wanna apply a line of hot glue and place the tail of those beads right in that line of glue. You wanna do this on each side of your sign.
And once it dries, you can go ahead and we are going to cover the back of the project. You guys know I love to finish off my projects with a backing. So all we have to do is I'm going to be using some brown craft paper and I'm going to apply a bead of hot glue along the back of that puzzle, just making sure there's enough where it adhere evenly. Flip it over and adhere it to your craft paper. You want to press it real firmly into there to make sure it's nice and bonded. Now once it's bonded, go ahead and protect your work surface and use an X-Acto knife or a utility knife and carefully trim that craft paper off around the edges. Now once you get around the beads, you want to be careful going around those, making sure you don't cut the jute twine holding them in place. And here you have it. It is nice and secure. The back looks super clean and professional. And now this is ready to hang or give as a gift. And here it is on display. Now I'm really excited about how this turned out. I think the lettering looks great and you can do a solid or a ticking outline if you choose. And speaking of choosing, I always have a hard time choosing my favorite projects when I have a collection like this, but I hope that these have inspired you to create your own versions of these. Now I would love to know which one of these projects was your favorite today. Let me know in the comments below. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when my next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.